If you notice, I tend to use language that allows room for response. You might notice that happening. I will never say, even when I'm doing something as simple as a progressive relaxation induction, right? I will say, imagine. Imagine that relaxation sinking in, moving down your arm. I will never say, and now your arm is relaxing. And that's in all the scripts. It drives me crazy. How do you know? You don't. So why would you say anything where there is a yes or no? Because you're right, it invalidates things. So when people say, you know, oh, this is it, one, you know, one session, you're never going to smoke again, you'll quit smoking, you'll quit. Because if they then go and take a drag, then the whole thing is a bust. If I say, you know, when people call me and they, they, they want uh, me to help them quit smoking, I mean, I don't, I don't really do that anymore because I like weirder shit and I have a bunch of students that work at my center who need clients, so it works out. Um, but they used to call and say, you know, you're the hypnotist, can you make me quit smoking? And I'd say, no. Wait, what? You're a hypnotist? Yes. Can you make me quit smoking? No. But here's what I can do. I can give you five different ways to stop a craving. More importantly, to stop the stressors that tend to lead to cravings so that you can rewire this habit faster than you think. I'll teach you self-hypnosis to make it really easy, but that gives you choices. You still have the choice to be stupid and smoke. <laughs> but I mean, this is what I do. I'm a teacher. I'll teach you all these great ways to make it easy. The choice is yours. I'm telling you the biggest freedom I ever got in this field was letting go of the full responsibility for my client's change. I will teach you all of these things. I will do my best. The rest is up to you. Put the change where it belongs. So when it comes to stuff like that, I always say, and some people, they find after just a hypnosis session, they're good. They're a non-smoker. They feel awesome. They don't even have to use these tools. Some people do. I don't know yet. Let's see what it's like. But I'm going to give you all of this just in case. This way we cover it. But you might notice some people, these are all softeners. These are all ways of allowing more room to respond so that you're never wrong, right? And it's a key, key thing. I'm really glad you brought that up really glad because you know um, there's some people who will use a technique and say and now you will you know you will never feel this this uh, pain again but how you can't say that because then if they do you're right it, it tends to invalidate the process you know I stay away from all of that authoritative languaging I never liked it and it doesn't allow any room for individual response and I like the continuum because everyone is different. And as soon as we think we know, <laughs> anyway, I remember, you know, when I was first learning, it was everything was so, blah, even a progressive relaxation. And now your arms are relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, we like a little space. It's so funny, I always joke, when, when my daughter was um, little, she was such a good Ericksonian hypnotist, you know? I'll never forget, there was one time I was going off to teach and she was crying and she was upset. And um, she, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to say, you know, well, Sophie, you know, um, you know, I'm using all of my little mom tricks, and finally I said something to the effect of, how do you want to feel instead? My daughter goes, no hypnosis. <laughs> <laughs> my husband's like, so mom just wanted to know how he wants to feel instead, and she stopped crying. 
and said, Daddy, when mommy says, how do you want to feel instead? She's doing hypnosis. And I'm like, <laughs> but even when she was younger, she came up to me once and she says, I'm worried for you. <laughs> it's like, what freaking four-year-old says I'm worried for you? Mine. Because she knows. If she would have just thrown herself on the floor and did some kind of crazy tantrum, that I can leave. But she's, I'm worried for you. And I'm like, what's going on, So She's like, I'm afraid you're going to miss me too much. <laughs> but wait, it gets better. She does, I'm afraid, and then direct hit. You're going to miss me too much. Then she goes like this. This was the, this was the moment. She says, you might want to take me with you. <laughs> I'm like, ah! Might? Did my daughter just say might? Anyway, <laughs> funny. So yeah, we want language that softens, that allows room. You might want to this, you might want to that. Whenever I'm doing a piece of change work and I'm bringing in you know, an alternative point of view through story or metaphor. It's always an offering. So one of the things that we're going to start to pay attention to, um, you know, tomorrow is, is the, the space between. I've been seating it the whole time. But you'll notice that when I'm doing coaching, let's say I'm sitting here and we're coaching, if I'm going to offer up a little story like my daughter, I'm going to lean back out of the coaching space and slightly turn this way. It becomes an offering. It becomes a subtle shift in perspective rather than I'm going to take this story and, and, and shove it at you. It becomes just an alternative point of view. And I do that all the time. It's part of what I do. I never knew I did it until I watched myself in these demos. And I noticed that, indeed, I have patterns, especially when I do the coaching pattern. I thought I was just, you know, flying, what do they say, flying by the seat of your pants? Mm -hmm. Flying by the seat of your pants. <laughs> Can that be the actual phrase? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what the, what the hell does that mean? The old planes. The old planes. They just had a little seat and a stick is all there was. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <sighs> so, um, we've got a few different things that I want to do. Um, more than a few, and I want to make sure we get to them. So I know that we said we were going to practice some more uh, inductions. We're going to do that, but uh, before I forget, I do want to talk about shifting perspective from, you know, working with where is it in your body. I do want to give you some more ideas. So we already know we can drop through it. We can drop right inside, and if there's a message in this, what can we do? You can change the shape and put it out here. You can change the color. You can change any um, submodality of it, and it will change, just like the metaphoric two-step. Sometimes you want to dive in, and sometimes you want to change scope and dive out. So sometimes you're going to expand awareness. Like, Take a moment. Close your eyes, everybody. And I want you to localize just a, a, you know, a sensation in your body, right? As if I would say, where is it in your body? As you localize that, I want you to imagine it for a moment as if it were a pebble. And the pebble on the beach. And the beach on an island island, in the ocean, the ocean on a planet. That's right. Just notice what that does. And open your eyes. Sometimes expanding out is the key, sometimes dropping in, sometimes shifting attention to everywhere that it isn't is another way. Remember when I said, once you localize it, it becomes so much easier 
to move consciousness to somewhere else. You see, once someone labels something, right, anxiety, whatever, what's everywhere else that it's not? Once it's got a nice little boundary, we've got a thousand ways to move the mind to anywhere else, right? So one of my friend John's uh, patterns, he's kind of amazing when it comes to his language, that is just a simple maneuver that you can feel. I want you to take a moment and go back to that localized uh, feeling in your body. and focus on it. And notice what happens when I say, what is everything else that's not that, that you're not noticing now? That's right. <laughs> if you could see some of your expressions. There's a, everyone does this in some form because you are expanding out. It minimizes the thing. It moves attention around, right? So once we have it localized, you can then switch systems. What's everything else that you're not noticing that you can see now? As you're seeing that, what's everything else that you're not hearing that you can now? And you start to move consciousness around to loosen it up, to shake up the structure. Right? So where is it in your body gives us a foundation for so many things. Now, in the same way that in the beginning of this class, I taught you how to, you know, use these little things of teaching your clients to hone your skill set, to practice your nonverbal communication, your tonal shifts, your spatial temporal language. I touched on a little bit how people are showing you all the time the way they code their problem and their solution by their body language and their words, right? We talked about how when people are intimidated, it's typically coded up here because from the early foundational prime, they had to look up. These are all things that you can start to be even more aware of so that you can manipulate consciousness. You want to look for all these little exercises to be ways for you to hone your skill set. So one of the other things, so who's got a little discomfort? Physical, emotional, it doesn't matter. You got something? Do you want to come up here? OK. Now, this is just a little piece. It's not even a big deal. You can even do it standing up. OK? So t just here's the thing. If you can't hear, so take a moment. What is this thing? Uh, practicing these techniques with other hypnotherapists. Ah, so it's not a physical thing. No. OK. All right. So when you, uh, when was, okay, so this is a different demo, but it's okay. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. So take a moment. When the last moment was where you wanted to practice, mm -hmm. you felt that feeling? Mm -hmm. Where is it in your body? Um, my jaw. So focus on this feeling in your jaw. If it were a color, what color does it feel like? Um, violet. What color do you think would feel better? Take a moment and imagine that whole thing changing to that light green. And that light green kind of softening or loosening it up or smoothing it out, whatever that light green needs to do so that it comforts and soothes. And if you could um, yeah, it's a little interesting to try it with this, but let's see what happens. As you take a moment and let that light green kind of sink in, transforming that whole feeling, 
Imagine you could wrap that feeling in something really soft. What's the softest material you can think of? Fleece. So imagine wrapping that whole area in a soothing, comforting, making you feel secure and safe fleece. And as you imagine wrapping that fleece there and it the comfort kind of sinks in so that you can just get more and more comfortable inside. What are you noticing now? I feel a lot more relaxed. Mm-hmm. And that feeling that you had in your jaw? Um, that's gone. That's gone. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, In the moment, you can open your eyes. So the basic thing I wanted to show you was by changing the color, wrapping it in something that the physical discomfort will be gone. So we we got that piece. Did you wrap the color she didn't like or the color she liked? Color she liked. Color she liked. All I need was that moment. I never bring up a color that didn't work for her. Right? Once again, All the focus is on the, you know, the good stuff. So, but since you're here, would you like to nail that thing? Yeah. Good. So we're going to sit down for this one, but remind me to recap what I just did so you can practice it. When was the last time specifically? Specifically, um, the last time we did it. Stop. Mm -hmm. So take a moment. I want you to go to that moment right before. How do you know it's time to feel that feeling? Uh, Because you said it's time to practice. Stop, slow down. So when I say it's time to practice, in that moment when you hear me say that, or are you looking at me, or are you looking at someone else? I'm looking inward. Now, right before you look inward, you hear, you're watching me, yes? Because mm-hmm. I'm teaching. Mm-hmm. And I say, okay, get together and practice this. Mm-hmm. And in that moment, there it is, stop, shake. All right. Now here's the funny thing. Everybody has a little bit of this. Even when we're doing ridiculous, playful things. It's just the way it is. But anyway, but let's get rid of it. So in that moment, if I had a magic wand, How would you like to feel? Um, Anticipatory. Okay, and what would that feel like? Um, Excited and confident and ready. So excited and confident and ready. And you know this shit is all made up, right? Yeah. And you know that I flub through almost everything because it's the way that I learn. Okay. It's true. (laughs) It's true. They know. They've been at my center for longer courses. They know I'm fucking it up at least once, twice, three times a day. But that's okay. It's how I learn. So take a moment. What would it be like if you were excited and playful and confident and you were just itching for the opportunity to practice? Uh, That would be amazing. And when you imagine it's already happening, and you imagine that it can be amazing because you can be playful and you can bring in that confidence in a way that just allows you to be like, all right, next victim, who wants to play? That kind of thing. When you imagine that it is maybe six months from now and you've just got that excitement, that confidence, maybe you're looking for meetup groups, you can practice even more weird stuff. How does that feel when you imagine it? That feels really good. And when it feels really good, I want you to hear me say, all right, get together and practice. So that you can turn to one of your, pick one, and say, let's do this thing. Yeah. So take a moment, feel what it feels like when you're excited, and you're confident, and it feels good. And you're just curious. I would say better than being even totally confident that you can do this thing, I'd be curious because curious gets you far. Mm -hmm. If you're curious how it's gonna go, then you're paying attention. Right. You don't have to be confident, but you can definitely be curious, right? Yeah, for sure. 
So what would it be like if you just amped up the curiosity? And that each and every person here is going to respond differently. And that's the real world. Mm -hmm. Everyone responds differently. So imagine you're curious and you're excited and your shoulders are back and you're getting confident. And then imagine me saying, okay, everybody get together. How does it feel now? Fine. And when it feels fine and that, you see the shrug, we like that. That's kind of what we're looking for, all right? Because ultimately, when I want to collapse something, what I want is a, eh, not a big deal kind of state. I'm not looking for Tony Robbins. Yes! <laughs> and now I say practice. And how do you feel? Okay. Good. So now she laughed. I had to then connect it again, right? So the more times we can kind of get you into different states and connect it to, you know, all right, everybody, get together and practice, the better and the more flexible. Make sense? Yes. Are you curious? Yeah. I'm ready. And when you're ready, how do you know? Um, I just, I feel like I'm anticipating doing it. And yeah, and when you're yeah. feeling like you're anticipating doing it, and I say, all right, everybody, find a partner, how does it feel now? Do, are we, can we practice now? Yes. <laughs> All right, good. So, so we are going to practice. We're going to practice this little piece. So let me go over uh, why I want you to practice this one. All right? You're going to get together. You're going to work on something, right? Typically, I do this for physical discomfort. So if the person you're working with doesn't have any pain, a, 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 a kick or a um, pinch might do it and just work on that area. It doesn't have to be a hard kick. Um, so just, you know, create an area of pain. Then, all oh, right, all right. You can just find an area that you want to feel more comfort in. How's that? So no kicking. I forgot I'm on camera. No kicking, no pinching, no, none of that. So you're going to say, focus on an area. If they don't have discomfort, just have them focus on any area to do this. Then you say this, and here's why I'm teaching this to you. Is everything cool? Sorry. I thought you were ripping your hair out. Um, So the reason why I want you to do this is because there's a few things in this that will allow you to practice certain things. So I'm going to go over it again. All right? So I'm going to say, what color is it? Now remember, this is already taking what was pain and changing it by turning it into a color. In the same way that if I would have said, what shape is it? So what color is it? You listening? Then I say, what color would feel better? There's a pause, and then I subtly shift my tone, the embedded command being feel better. Now, when I ask that question, what do they have to do in order to answer me? They do a trans derivational search. That's right. They've got to do a trans-derivational search, which simply means they've got to go inside. And as they're going inside looking for something that feels better, they are not looking at the pain. So once they come up with the color, I say, imagine that whole area. Now listen to my voice. My voice is now going to be like a soothing Right? Like as if it were a physical thing. And the best way for me to get my voice to do that is to imagine it on me. The same way that the best way to get the legs heavy is to make my legs heavy. It's easier for me to say heavy when my legs are heavy. It's just a cheat, but it works. So I say imagine that whole area changing color and then I bring in the color they want the softest soothest 
right? I'm just bringing in words that have so many neuro associations to comfort. So imagine that, you know, blue, let's say they said blue. Imagine that blue being soothing and that comfort sinking in. That whole area getting more and more comfortable as that blue sinks in. Listen to my voice. Then I say, if you could wrap it in something, what kind of material do you think is the softest? And what do we have again? Another search inside. This time looking for a softer material. We're now veering into almost a kinesthetic. But we are also fractionating, aren't we? We're going in, coming out, going in, coming out. So now imagine that whole area, right? Being wrapped by that really soothing material that softens, comforts, sinking in, protects it. And when that's happening now, what are you noticing? Got it? So you say, what color is it? What color would, pause, feel better? You're going to, if you mention the discomfort, it's that whole area where that discomfort was. You see how it's, you never want to put it in the present or the future. So that whole area changing color and that comfort sinking in. So I want you to get together, right, with someone very close, right, right near you. Do this, use your inside voices, but try it on. This is a one minute technique. So, you know, it's a little piece, but it makes a difference, doesn't it? It's surprising. Now, from a deeper trance, that, that technique really works. But even from no trance at all, it creates its own light trance state. But more importantly, it allows you um, another vehicle for practice, another vehicle to play. Any questions? We good? Yes. She said you almost can use the thing you just taught us. Wow, that is a, that's a tongue twister. As in where is the pain not? What's everything that you hadn't been noticing that's not that? That's right. Um, so, you know, these are, these are little things that kind of have a lot in them. I and mean, it's good to practice. It's good to kind of practice being that soothing voice. 